Hello everyone. Uh, welcome to today's class. Our last lecture, we spent time to talk about sports products, and we look at what makes sports product unique. Uh, we look at uh, the differences between groups and service. We also look at how we are going to introduce a new product to the sports markets, and we also look at the uh, what we call new product life circles. Um, when as a customer, when we are trying to buy some things. Uh, when we are going to buy a product that we are not really familiar with, a lot of time, uh, what will really help us in the decision making process is brand. We more likely to go to buy a brand that we are more familiar with compared to um, a brand that is less known. So, develop a very good brand is very very important. So, in today's class, we are going to talk about branding. In sports industries, uh, speaking of branding, there are a lot of terms um, that we're going to talk about today. Um, so we're going to talk about brand, talk about branding, talk about brand awareness. We talk about brand equity, talk brand association, brand loyalty, and brand image. Um, so hopefully, at the end of the class, when we review what we have learned today, that you are able to understand the differences between these terms. So first of all, what is a brand? Um, so based on the American Marketing Association's uh, definition, a brand um, they matter to a customers. Uh, a brand is a name, term, or design symbol, or any other features that identify a seller's goods and service as distinct from those of the other sales. So what? Is a brand is basically that can really differentiate these products from other products, right? So make your company very very unique. So this is a brand. Um, the brand normally has uh four purpose. Um, the first purpose is called identity, to show who you are as the organization. The second one is an image, just like how other people think of you. And the third, a brand also means a promise. It's a promise that you give it to your customer. Brand is also the opportunity for you to develop a relationship with your target audience. So these are four purpose for the brands. So we're gonna talk a little bit more about this particular purpose or role for the brands. So first of all, we talk about brand um, is an identity. So identity refers to a brand will help customer identify what it is and distinguish it from other brands. So it may include a name, a logo, or color. Uh, for instance, uh, when we talk about Chicago Cubs, uh, you you know uh, I'm referring to a professional sports organization that located in Chicago. Uh, you know this is a baseball teams. Right, so this is kind of like the identity of the brand, right? When I'm talking about a uh, swatch symbol, a lot of customer know this is Nike, right? Um, if you see a blue star, you possibly know that you see in Cowboys logos, right? So the identity elements are very crucial to a brand because it can play a role in create brand awareness among the customers, help customers to recognize who you are, what you do as an organization, and what product you're providing. Right? It can also set apart from the other brands. So when a sports franchise um, create a logo, uh, the design, the color they pick are very, very important because they really differentiate themselves from the others. Right? So this is um, the first role um, as identity. A brand, the second role um, is they serve as a representation of thoughts or men a mental association that people hold for our products or the image. So the second role for a brand is is an image of the customer, how customer think of you um, as the organization think of you um, as a particular brand. So the definition of the brands also think a brand is the customer and user's experience um, represented by image and ideas. So the image created through a lot of different uh, information that you have received and help you create these images. Although uh, you know those brands, 
uh, it does not mean you have used a purchase this brand before. Uh, for instance, um, you know the Michael Jordans opened the state house in downtown Chicago. Um, uh, that's pretty well known, right? But you might never have tried it before, right? So you know uh, that's a really well known person opened a very well known state house uh, in Chicago, but you have never been there. Uh, but that's the image let people to know this brand is existing in the markets. Okay, this is the second row. The third row is a brand is also a promise, uh, a promise of action that will benefit a customer. The customer have their favorite brands because um, they always believe uh, the product uh, being pr produced by this particular brand or service being provided by this particular brand can de uh, deliver very good value. Uh, the promise um, could be um, very tangible. I'll give you an example. When you buy a new car, um, nowadays it's very common that you'll be able to get two-year warranty. Right, two year warranty. The uh, the seller, the dealer gave it to you is a promise that you can um, go and find him if you have any problem or trouble with the car you purchased from there. Right, and a lot of time, if you go to Walmart, uh, you have the receipt. Um, the reason of you have the receipt a lot of time, you might not really satisfied with the product you purchased, and you will ask for a refund. Right, so this is also a promise. I promise that we are able to provide you a very good qualities of the service um, that you're expecting as a customers. So all we all know brands in the world have their slogan. The slogan is also showing uh, their promise like Coca-Cola. Um, their slogan is like, go fresh, right? So so the promise is refreshments for the McDonald's. So it promise consistency. Right, they promise every product you purchase from McDonald's is a consistent product. They're good quality of product. And for the Olympic Games, right, the promise is like faster, higher, stronger. So they show about the promise they have to the audience who are following the Olympic Games, uh, watching the Olympic sports. Okay, the last row for the brand is brand is also uh, about we're going to develop great relationship with your customers. Uh, speaking of sports marketing or other marketing, that's a new trend in the most recent years called relationship marketing. So relationship marketing, the emphasis is not just about we're selling you a product. The more important things is we would like to develop a long-term relationship with the customer and the customer can keep coming back and visit you and maybe become your, your long-term customer. So developing this relationship is very important. Having a brand, um, we are also try to show our loyalty um, to the customer as well. Um, let the customer trust you uh, just like how they trust their friends and family members and give them a confidence that you are able to uh, deliver these consistent qualities um, for those products, right? So those uh, what are the brands and the, the four unique roles for um, having a very good brand. So this is a brand. And what is branding? So branding is a process. So branding is a name, design, symbol, or any of the combination the organization use to help differentiate its product from the other. Branding include brand name, brand mark, and trademarks. Right, so what is a brand name? So branding is the element of the brand that can be vocalized. And how are you going to develop a good branding for a sports organization? So you have to follow the following rules. Um, first of all, uh, make sure the name is very positive, uh, distinguished, and easy to remember and to pronounce. A lot of names, they are linked with the cities, uh, geographies names like Chicago Cubs or Chicago White Sox. Right? So they're all related to uh, the cities. St. Louis Canals, they're also related to the cities. Right. So the name should also be um, translatable to uh, dynamic uh, attitude organ, uh, oriented logos. Um, for instance, um, in 2010, um, MLS Kansas City uh, Whistles decided to change the name to the um, Kansas City Sporting KC. Um, so speaking of this decision, the CEO say, um, the reason they would like to change that to Sporting KC is they want to show 
um, how much the organization would like to engage with their local community and let friends are more related to the teams. Right, so that's the uh, another very important thing when we try to develop a brand name for the organizations. And the name also needs to be associated with other product likes. Uh, maybe you are producing a lot of different product lines. Make sure the name is actually related to other product lines. Um, also, you need to be uh, make sure try to uh, make sure the name is uh, legal and ethical. Um, speaking of the legal and ethical, um, in the 2005, the NCAA um, they require all its members institution to self evaluate whether the teams are using uh, potentially offensive images with their mascot toys. So their policy um, stress that every member's institutions, they can't use um, American Indians related to related Moscow during that seasons. So after um, these policies about like uh, 14 universities and athletic department, they decided to change their brand names. Right, so this has also become a pretty controversial issue at the moment. Uh, we know Miami uh, athletic departments in the past is called uh, Miami Redskins, right? So in the 1998, so they decided to change it to the Red Hawks. Um, so that was uh, pretty successful. I'm glad they changed that names um, a long time ago, uh, because currently the uh, Washington Redskins is actually suffering uh, about they've been receiving a lot of criticisms about they've been using. Um, the rest game for a very long period of time for the organizations. And after many years of these controversies, the MFL uh, Washington Redskins also decided to retire their name and logo this year, and they will have to use the new names. So when we are creating a name for the organization, make sure they are not offensive um, to all the different groups. Okay, so this is about branding. The next one is called brand mark. Brand mark, a lot of time we call them logos. It's the elements of the brand that cannot spoken. A lot of time we use it as uh, logos. Um, having a logos is uh, very, very important because they help uh, the customers remember you immediately. Um, so we're using Nike's like swatch logos. Um, I think a lot of people's, um, I think majority of the customers are able to recognize these logos. Right, so the link here, um, you can click keep on the link and you can watch a short video a little bit about the story of the how Nike's the logo was created. Actually, the designer, uh, Colin Davison, um, so he was only got paid $35 to create these logos in 1970s. But think about the brand value of the Nike has today, right? So uh, having a very easy to remember logo is also very important, recognizable logos. The third one is about trademarks. Trademarks is about the organization have legally registered its names and brand marks and also prevent other people from using it. So that's actually very important. That can make you logos become a very unique, your names become very unique. Other people cannot duplicate the strategy that you use to market yourself. Okay, so this is about uh, branding, about brand name, about brand mark, and also about uh, trademark. So branding process um, including four steps. Um, to begin with, uh, we need to try to increase the brand awareness. Um, and then we're going to create a, a brand image among customers. So brand image is the customers are easily to differentiate us from the others and know the features of the product being produced by us. The next step is to develop a brand equity, which is also referred to brand value to enhance the brand values. And then lastly, um, they will help customers to enhance their brand loyalty. So there are four process, four steps to enhance the, to develop a very good brand. First of all, let's look at brand awareness. So brand awareness is related to um, the string of the brand um, know in the memory as reflected by people's ability to recognize and record the brand. Um, so for the brand awareness, so that include, um, could be a logo, could be a slogan, could be a name of the organization, just help people to remember who you are uh, and also help people to help the customer to recognize that you're existing in this market. 
Let's look at a quick examples here. So here um, you are able to see 12 logos from the uh, fast food chain. Um, those 12 fast food chain are really popular. Um, I think majority of you be able to identify what these logos is. Although I'm only showing you a small part of these logos. Right, so see, there's a Coca Cola, right? The, this is Starbucks, this is a Pizza Hut, this is Taco Bell's, McDonald's, uh, Burger King's, um, and also KFC, Sprite, right? So those logos are very obvious. See, this is an example to see whether your brand have a very high recognition by the customers. The past customer look at the logo, not even the whole thing, not maybe just a little bit, and they be able to identify what this brand is, what kind of product that you're producing, and what kind of service that you're providing. So this is about brand awareness, right? So to develop brand, this is very, very important. And the second thing we need to do is to develop a brand image. The brand image, has also been considered as a personality of the brand. Um, it's customer set of belief about a brand which could shape attitudes. So there are a lot of factors they will impact the brand image, such as um, what kind of product you provide, um, products features, um, quality of the product, the price of the product, and also the name, uh, whether you're able to provide very good customer service um, after sales and the packages, promotions, and even the distribution channels, right? So this is about brand image. It's basically talk about how customer think of you um, as a brand. Are you an expensive brand? Are you a luxury brand? Are you a very like price friendly brand, right? So I'll give you a quick examples here, right? So ask uh, Speedos and Oakley, the three sports brands. Right, um, they produce a lot of different types of products, but a lot of customers and notice these brands, but also know what kind of product they produce the best. Ask us, for instance, a lot of customers buying their running shoes because their running shoes are very comfy and can really help them improve that performance. Right, so this is how uh, brand's image, how people think of you, what made your brand unique, although access produce a different types of product. Speedos, right? Speedos is well known for swimming suits, although Speedos also produce t-shirts, uh, produce other stuff, right? But any swimming related, um, high quality, high tech. Um, if you're wearing Speedos, most advanced technology swimming shoes, the price could be very high. And they also, for the professional swimmer, um, they also believe the swimming uh, speedo suits can really help them to improve their performance. Right, Oakley also provides, uh, produce a lot of different products, but it's well known for the sunglass. Um, and also a very interesting thing is a lot of like beach volleyball players, they are wearing Oakley when they are competing. Um, so that may at least uh, have that particular image among people's head, right? If you're going to play beach volleyball and you need sunglasses, Oakley normally they're your first options because you can, you can, you have seen a lot of people wearing it when they're playing these sports, right? So this is about image, how people think of you, um, as a brand, as a products. And if the people be able to, uh, um, notice you and also honor, have a, pictures of you. And the next thing is we're going to enhance or develop a brand equity. Brand equity, in other words, called brand value. So it's the value that customers and the brand are contributed to a products in the marketplace. Right? So um, when we're going to buy something like, for instance, buy a winter jacket, there are so many options available in the market, a lot of different brands. Right. Um, so you have like Columbia, you have North Face. They are really popular. Like Nike uh, also produce some of the winter jacket too. Like, right. And also Canada Goose is also produce um, winter jackets too. Um, and also some luxury brands like Blabbery. They also uh, produce winter jackets. Right. Um, uh, McLaren also produce winter jackets. So their prices are very very different. Right. Um, a lot of people willing, I've seen a lot of students willing, um, North Face is a very, very common, 
uh, when we're walking on campus. You know, the price for those winter jackets is is about like you know, uh, two hundred bucks, three hundred bucks. Right. Also, I've seen some students really in Canada groups. Right, Canada groups became really popular um, um, during the winter. Uh, so, but the Canada goods, the price of their winter jacket is very expensive. It's about a thousand dollars, or even more expensive than that, right? And if you talk about the quality, you you really North Face and really Canada goods, um, I don't Canada goods price is like five times as much as um, the jacket costs of the North Face, but their quality is not five times better. Right, but what made Canada goods can charge very high price, because it's the brand equity. People believe their product is unique. Um, their design is fashion. Um, uh, the quality of their uh, their product is 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 consistent, and you know, it worth. If you spend a thousand dollars to buy a winter jacket, you think it's worth it, right? So this is called brand equities. Right. So brand equity normally include these four components, right? So perceived quality. People believe that you have that quality and you have the brand awareness. You have the brand association and brand loyalty. So this is how we can define a brand equities. So what kind of factors that will impact brand equity? When we look at this model, we find out um, if you look at sports industries, for instance, so any team related factors that will have impact on the brand equities. So if team is a very successful team, has a great history, so normally that brand equity is higher. They have a really well known head coach, they have a lot of star players, that brand equity will be higher. Right. And also they have organization related, including the repetition and tradition of the organization. The conference schedules, the entertainment packages, and product delivery. So those things also enhance the uh, brand equities. Uh, some people like to buy luxury products uh, in our world, right? A luxury product normally charge much higher price compared to regular products. Like particularly, uh, if you want to buy a bag, a lot of um, females uh, customers would like to buy a fancy bag, right? Some of the bag can cost you like more than. Um, hundred thousand dollars for a very small bag um, so those are brand equities the luxury brand is really have a very high brand equities right so if you look at their package their package is also very fancy as well they look very you know fancy compared to these regular bag you purchase from the retailers right so those factors are also determine the brand equity and market related include the media coverage how media mentioned about this brand hey this brand's brand new popular among these uh, wealthy people so their brand equity will enhance right their geography location the competitive force and support will also will impact their brand equity having a very strong brand equity can help you get a lot more media exposure Obviously, it can help you increase sales, generate more revenues, right? It will help you get a lot more uh, corporate support, right? And for the sports organization, it can also enhance your ticket sales, right? So this is why the brand work really hard to de increase their values and increase their brand equity, which can help them to maximize their revenue generation to help them um, uh, make more money. We're using a one uh, quick examples here. So Jeremy Lin, Jeremy Lin used to play at the NBA, right? He's not longer playing the NBA at the moment. Uh, he's currently playing CBA in China. Uh, but in the past, he's been uh, playing the NBA for many years. So he started to let people to uh, remember him is back to 2012. So 2012. So what made Jeremy Lin became so popular? Like if you look at basketball skill, he is not like a super star levels of the uh, basketball players like LeBron James and Kobe Bryant, like Stephen Curry. Like he's not like in that levels, but he's a lot 
well known than most of the NBA players. So what made him so powerful, so unique? Uh, some people may remember him was like from the 2012 when he was playing for New York Knicks. So he's been playing really well in couple games for, for, for about more than 10 games. He's been playing really well consistently. So media career work called um, Lean Sanders at that time. So made him so well known immediately, right? So what made him so popular? So when he started playing the NBA at that time, right, people only recognize him as a regular NBA player, um, right? He's Harvard graduate, so that made him sort of play, you know, the uh, Jamie Lisbon is kind of better than, than some other NBA players because he graduated from Harvard, right? The best university in the world, right? And also another, his identity is that he's Asian American, um, if you watch NBA or other sports, you rarely see Asian American play in this um, in the professional sports league, uh, because Asian American has been perceived by the general public that uh, they are good at study, but not very good at sport. But so generally, it sort of like changed how people's perception towards these um, Asian uh, American athletes, and also he graduated from Harvard. Like really few. Um, NBA players, a well-known NBA player, graduate from these um, Ivy League schools, so also make him very unique. So what made him so popular? Um, of course, in addition to his performance uh, at New York Knicks in in, in the twenty twelve seasons, um, and the the very important thing uh, was because like um, he was in New York at that time. So New York Knicks um, has not been a very strong team uh, for a very long time, right? In the last 20 years, uh, New York Knicks um, have rarely qualified for the uh, playoff of the, of the NBA. Um, but because he located in New York, so New York is a big, the biggest of markets uh, in the U.S., also in the world, right? So it, they attract a lot of media attention in New York City. There are so many media covering sports, although the team perform performance is not good, but they can get a lot of media coverage and those well-known media like New York Times, uh, one of the best newspapers in the world, right? And there's so many um, TV broadcasts with there as well. So that explains why Jamelin can get famous um, immediately, very quick, um, although he does not have a super performance like any other stars, uh, but still got a lot of fame. Right, that's a really important. That location is important. He was playing in New York. Right, anything happening in New York could be a big news. They really help Jamie Lynn develop his brand, and his brand value has been enhanced significantly, um, just in a very short period of time. Okay, so this is about brand equities. I'm um, having a high, uh, strong brand equity. They have a lot of benefits. Right, um, they can less. Uh, justice revenues declines when the team's not performing really strong. They're able to charge higher prices uh, for sports fans. They will have a lot more corporate interest. More people want to work with you and you can sell more you know, licensing and merchandise products. Uh, we're using Chicago Cubs uh, makes example. So in Chicago, there's a two teams, right? two MLB teams. One's Cubs, one's White Sox. If you look at the result, I mean, White Sox is even better than Cubs sometimes, right? Um, Cubs before 26 teams, they barely have a very strong performance. So the last time for the Cubs to win the World Series was 100 years ago, right? Uh, however, Chicago Cubs is a, a little bit more popular than the White Sox in Chicago, right? Look at their facility. Uh, Wrigley Field is actually in downtown Chicago. Right. Um, location is very good, and also their friends have a very strong loyalty. So the brand's equity is also very high. Um, so you look at um, their performance from 2004 to 2019. Uh, you look at like 2016. They have a very successful season, right? Winning 103 games. Right. The attendance at 3.2 million people. Right. Um, if you look at the other seasons, like 2008 season, for instance, there was, there was also a very good season for them. 93 victory lost six, 64 games. Um, so average attendance at that year was like 40,000 people. 
And but if you look at 2012 seasons, they won only 61 games, but lost 101 games. But the average attendance was still like 35,000 people. So when a team have a very high brand equities, they will more likely for the team to charge higher price for the customers and also for the customer uh, particularly for the sports fans have very strong loyalty we have a less price and uh, sensitivities so they're more likely to come right so that's the benefit for have a brand uh, equities so here let's give you example a uh, team a and team b right team a's revenues a flat traded team b is like this obviously team a has a uh, higher brand equities right here is another example. So this example show you team with the highest ticket price in the major professional sports league in the U.S. from 2011 to 2013. Look at MFL, NBA, and MHL and MLB. Right. So you look at those um, top five teams, then charge higher price uh, than the other teams. Right. Um, what kind of characteristics have you find out? from these high brand equities uh, sports teams. Give you a few seconds to think about. You look at MFL, the New York Giants, um, Cowboys, Patriots, New York Giants, uh, Chicago Bears, right? Look at NBA, New York Knicks, Lakers, uh, Boston's, Miami Heat, Chicago Bulls, so if you look at you know those teams, uh, NHL is uh, Toronto, um, Winnipeg's, and Edmond, Vancouver, Vancouver's, and also Montreal. If you look at all those teams, right, that's a really common thing for those professional teams that have a higher uh, brand equity is they are located in the big city, right? They are located in big city. Uh, when you're located in the big city, you don't need to have a very good result like we talk about new york knicks um, the result was not good at all did not qualify for the playoff in 2012 right and a new york Giants was also you no know, okay right so you don't need to have a very good result but you look at your big market you have more fans you have more sponsorship opportunities so your brand values is higher than um, the tips coming from a smaller markets so you can charge higher price because you have more fans more customers more wealthy fans right and the second thing obviously performance plays some sort of role too in the team have pretty good performance um, they can really help you to um, have a higher brand equities right and the, obviously the reputation of the team itself you have a lot of great stars or can help you to enhance brand value miami heat is examples in 2012 there are top three players three big players playing at the heat at that time so it can really help the teams to attract a lot a lot of attention they can charge higher price than the others and look at nhl um, the top five cities are all located in canada Right, so this is related to the popularity of the sport, right? Obviously, hockey is a lot more popular in Canada than in the U.S., right? So, their attendance, they can charge higher prices um, for uh, for each of the tickets, right? So, this is another example. The next one, we're going to talk about developing uh, brand equity. How are we going to develop brand equities? Uh, to develop a strong brand equity, we need to develop unique, strong, and favorable brand association. So what is a brand association? Um, let's look at these pictures, these logos. Uh, so you know this is uh, Chicago Bulls, right? You look at, you know, Chicago Bulls. So when you look at this one, what kind of thing do you can think of? Right? A lot of people would think about Chicago, the city. Uh, some people will relate it to uh, Michael Jordan, right? The players that really made Chicago Bulls well known in the war. Um, I, I don't know how many of you watched The Last Dance, the documentaries um, during the COVID 19. They really attract a lot of people um, watching that documentary, a lot of people talking about these documentaries too, right? So some people, when they look at this logo, may also think about the head coach that held Chicago Bulls winning the NBA championship, Phil Jackson, 
where he helped the team win six NBA championship in during the 1990s. Some people can also think about associate this um, uh, image with the uh, United Center, where is the venue that Chicago Bull is uh, using, right? So all those things we mentioned associate with these brands is about brand association. Okay, brand association is anything which is deep seeped in the customer mind about this brand. When you look at the brand, you can think about particular things. Right, those include your logo, trademarks, um, nicknames, mascots. Uh, sometimes, sometimes people can also remember the owners. Uh, some owners always like the media coverages. Right, when we talk about cowboys, people will remember Jerry Jones. Right, a lot of time people will also remember um, obviously star players. Right, but the star player comes and goes. Um, so that could also impact the brand associations and also impact the band, brand values too. Some people will remember um, the head coach of the uh, the teams. Um, some people might re look at the local will remember the rivalry. Like you think about Chicago Cubs, some people will think about St. Louis Cardinals, right? Some people also think about the other entertainment package and stadium arena is also something always associated with uh, sports franchise. So this is the third step, something that we can develop is develop brand equity, enhance the brand values. So the last step is uh, brand loyalties. So brand loyalty is a consistent preferences or repeat purchase of one brand over others in that product category. As a customer, when we made a decision, we consider more about we are purchasing happy rather than conduct a very serious comparisons among all these options we have. So we talked about fan identification uh, levels before uh, when we talk about consumer behaviors. Uh, we can um, classify those uh, sports fans into two groups. Some of those we say loyal fans, some are fair weather fans. So what a difference. Loyal fans um, they can ensure all the team success and hardship. So regardless team is winning or losing, the loyal fans is always there for them, for the teams, right? So for the sports organization, you always think about how we're able to retain these loyal fans, right? And what would the fair weather fans, they would jump to and from the team when they're successful at that time. But when the team is not performing as well, as they they thought so they were started to you know support some other teams so this is about brand loyalty so for a sports franchise we need to think about how we're able to build up a very strong loyal fan base and how are we going to uh, make these fair weather friends become a loyal friends so this is about the brand loyalties Uh, another pretty interesting thing um, we'd like to think about is um, how, what kind of factor will impact friend loyalties. So will relocation will impact the friend loyalties? Are we using rents as example? The rents um, initially was in uh, California, right? But later on, they moved to St. Louis and been in St. Louis for like, a very long period of time, nearly 20 years. Right. And then they moved back to Los Angeles in 2016. Um, so it's actually kind of interesting thing to see when the professional sports organization relocated from one market to another market, how would this will impact fan loyalties? Obviously, fans in St. Louis, um, most of them would decided not to support rents because um, they're not their teams anymore. So it's actually kind of interesting to see how many more St. Louis fans are still supporting Rens, although the team's already being relocated. So that's something um, it's kind of fascinating to learn. All right, um, for today, I am also give you the opportunity um, to learn about a brand story. This brand is called Red Bull. So I already shared a video. This video is not long at all. They teach you how Red Bull was founded in Austria and how this brand from uh, Thailand to rebrand it 
and develop a global brand starting from Austria and how this brand was introduced to the United States and become a global brand that we know today. So make sure you watch the video. And the last thing we're going to do is we're going to review uh, what we just talked about today. Uh, we talk about a lot of different concepts, brand. We talk about branding, branding process. We talk about brand, brand awareness. So you'll be able to notice this brand is existing, right? Brand equities talk about brand value, right? Brand association talk about all these elements related to this particular brand. Brand loyalties talk about uh, customers that keep buying the same brands over the others in that same product category. Brand image is talking about how people think of this particular brand um, in their mind, right? So this is about branding in sports. All right, that's it for today. Um, we'll see you guys next time. Bye.